We are Southeastern 16. That's Chris Lee. I'm Chase Robinson, as we will be giving you three bold predictions for the South Carolina Gamecocks heading into 2024, as they've had to replace, obviously, Spencer Rattler, their quarterback. But uh, Shane Beamer looking to uh, to put together a good roster heading into 2024. And uh, kind of, they, they missed a bowl game last year. Looking to get back there this year. So we'll give you three bold predictions for the Gamecocks in just a second. But let's talk Bet Online first. They are the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything online sports betting. Right now, you can receive a 50% free bet of up to $250 on your first deposit to bet on anything from the UFC uh, to baseball to Formula One racing. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, you can go to the online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker, or one of the over 150 slots games. Head over to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. That is promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. Bet online. The game starts here. All right, Chris, South Carolina, uh, like I mentioned, they uh, finished the season 5-7 and seven last year. Missed a bowl game. Uh, they were in one of those situations last year where they kind of had to to win out to be able to get to a bowl game. Uh, they were not able to do that uh, in the last four or five games of the season. Uh, but uh, they're looking to uh, kind of rewrite the script this year for South Carolina football. They got a lot of new faces on the field. So let's uh, go three bold predictions for South Carolina. Chris, I'll let you go first. Well, if you're going to rewrite the script – there's a guy that we need to be talking about. His name is Nick Harbor. I know when South Carolina signed him a couple of years ago, everybody was super excited. He'd been, I think, a defensive end in high school. I don't know if anybody really knew what they were getting other than a guy that was just a freakish athlete. And they've tried to make him a receiver. And last year, he did some things, 12 catches, 195 yards, and a score also ran it a couple of times. And everybody knows Nick Harbor is an elite talent. He spent his spring away from football trying to train for Olympic sprinting. Well, what that does is that causes you to not get in sync with your teammates. Uh, so there's a rhythm with Lenore Sellers uh, and your teammates and knowledge of the offense, all those things that he missed out on. And when you do some preseason looking around, and we're doing this in mid-August, it's hard to find a lot about Nick Harbour in terms of like there's not a lot of – I think he had a big catch in the scrimmage the other day that I looked up. Point, point is, there's not a lot to go on for this prediction other than a belief in the talent. But I'm just going to go with a gut feeling here and say second half of the season, Nick Harbour figures that out, puts it together. He's going to be a top five receiver in the SEC in receiving yards over the last six games. By that point, he'll be used to – catching passes from presumably Lenore Sellers. He will get more used to playing receiver in college football. I think the talent is there with Nick Harbour. Everybody knows it. Former top 25 recruit. I think that is when Nick Harbour starts to shine in the second half of the season. Okay. And and I know a lot of people are high on him. Like, he, he is a great player. And, yes, he, he doesn't get talked about quite as much because of, of him not playing in, in spring and everything. And so – uh, but yeah, I think that's definitely a, a possibility, and I think that's a really good bold prediction. But Nick Harbor, I think he he's going to be a name to remember in SEC football this year, uh, for sure. When it comes to catching the football, all right. Uh, here's my bold prediction. I'm going to go on the defense for this one. I'm going to go with Debo Williams leading the SEC in tackles. Hmm. Looking at some numbers from last year: 113 tackles. He had uh, eight tackles for loss and one sack last year. Uh, but I'm going to go with Debo Williams leading the SEC in tackles in 2024. That's an interesting pick. I, I think it's a good one. I, I think you could signal uh, or, or maybe point out the possibility of several big seasons from a lot of guys on this defense. Tonka Hemingway, defensive yep. tackle, I think could put up some numbers. Um Nick Emman uh broke up eight passes last year, had a couple of picks. I think you could see him, uh, if maybe not for the presence of Billy Bowman at Oklahoma, ranking among the, the league leaders in interceptions or, or breakups. I think there's a lot of guys there on that defense that could put up some numbers. And I think 
I think that's probably the right pick, though, Chase. Yeah, and and I I like him. I like um I like I like Debo Williams and what he's bringing to this defense. They they need a good leader on defense, and I think uh, I think he could be one of those guys. Tonka Hemingway as well. I mean, those are two guys that are are back in South Carolina uniforms. You know, they're they're getting some all SEC talk. So uh, Debo Williams leading the SEC in tackles. That's my bold prediction. What uh, what's what's your third, Chris? Well, what what does Shane Beamer do late in the season, Chase? He likes to pull some magic out. Make Usually, magic I mean, happen. Yeah, maybe last year didn't happen, but we, we're going to ignore that because that's not convenient to where I'm about to go. <laughs> um, but you look at the upset Shane Beamer, Beamer has pulled the last few years. You remember they finished strong his first year. They beat Clemson, beat Tennessee a couple of years ago. I'm going to go Shane Beamer pulls November Magic in, a, in an upset somewhere. Now, I think right now as we're doing this, they might be a double-digit underdog to Texas A&M or close. Um, at Missouri, probably going to be an underdog at Clemson. Certainly going to be an underdog. But what happens last time Shane Beamer went to Clemson, Chase? You remember that? Yeah, 22. He got the win there. Yeah, they had won, what, 41 straight at home? That's from memory. Shane Beamer just has figured out a way to keep his guys bought in and do something when people least expect it. Remember, they knocked Tennessee out of the playoff a couple of years ago. Yeah. I, I think Beamer ball, hey, w- when they get to November, it just flips a switch and something crazy happens that you don't see coming. Why not this year? You know, and I think back to, uh, to 2022 when they beat Tennessee, when they beat Clemson. I mean, it was it was a run there in the month of November. Um, such a, a fun time, and I feel like there was so many people that were jumping on that South Carolina bandwagon that year uh, when that happened. Uh, but yeah, I, Shane Beamer likes the month of November. Uh, that is for sure. Now they lost to Clemson last year, but they did get three wins against Jacksonville State, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky, uh, which were three wins that that. Uh, I feel like they should have won those games, but uh, but they 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 had a good November last year, except for that uh, loss to uh, to Clemson. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a good bold prediction, and it reminds me a lot of of 2022 when he pulled two big upsets there in uh, and made some magic in the month of November. The other thing that helps is the A and M game in Columbia, as is the Missouri game. That's Columbia, South Carolina. So I think being in your building. Yep. Maybe enhances the possibility of some upsets there. Now, look, the other two games in November at Vanderbilt and Wofford, the Gamecocks are going to be favored in both those games, so upset will not apply there. But I'm going to say they get somebody. And, and boy, if they if they get somebody, they could really play spoiler in the college yes. football playoff chase because I think A&M could be in the mix by that point. I think Missouri, everybody expects Missouri to be in the mix, and, and Clemson is always in the mix. Yeah, the they ACC, could win the ACC so. this year. Yeah, I mean, we we have seen them spoil somebody's playoff dreams once. I say, I say we see it again. All right, I like that. I like it a lot. We'll have you covered on the South Carolina Gamecocks and all the sixteen SEC teams here on Southeastern sixteen. Subscribe to our channel and uh, share it with your friends as we get closer to football season. We'll have you covered wall to wall in football season. We do. We have you covered year round with SEC football, basketball, and baseball. So subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you want to sponsor our content, shoot me an email: chase at southeastern14.com or caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. We can start those conversations. We are Chase Robinson and Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 16, presented by Bet Online.